Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Drones and other unmanned combat air systems play an increasingly critical role in military operations worldwide. They offer an unprecedented ability to reduce military costs by increasing accuracy, reducing the risks to civilians, and protecting military personnel from harm. The various missions of drones include intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance, or ISR, as well as target acquisition. Roger, understand one, two, S-19, the open read back, requesting. They can carry aircraft ordnance, such as missiles, anti-tank guided missiles, and bombs in hard points for drone strikes. The Northrop Grumman X-47B was developed for aircraft carrier-based operations of the U.S. Navy. It was intended to assist with ISR, as well as penetrating protected airspace and identifying targets for follow-on attacks. Design considerations for this 38-foot-long naval aircraft include contacting the corrosive saltwater environment and deck handling for launch and recovery. It also considers integrating with the command and control system and operating in the high electromagnetic interference environment of an aircraft carrier. The X-47B is a tailless unmanned aircraft with a wingspan of 62 feet. It is low observable and has a weapons bay carrying 4,500 pounds of weapons. The navigation is controlled by a hybrid GPS vision-based system while monitored by a mission operator. Powered by a Pratt & Whitney F100 PW220U engine, the aircraft reaches a high subsonic speed of approximately 0.45 Mach and a range of about 2,000 nautical miles. The first and subsequent test flights started in 2011 showed a consistent success and were then taken to the next level of testing at sea. The drone demonstrated successful aircraft carrier launches and recoveries performed from George H.W. Bush aircraft carrier. In 2015, the drone made yet another achievement in aviation history by successfully conducting the first ever autonomous aerial refueling. That was, it was within limits, 20027, and that was at uh, time 50. This capability unlocked the full potential of what unmanned surveillance, strike, and reconnaissance systems can do in support of the Navy. One of the latest drones specifically designed for aerial refueling is MQ-25A Stingray. Developed by Boeing in 2018, the aircraft serves a particular mission of the Navy to deliver 15,000 pounds of fuel total to four to six airplanes at a range of 500 nautical miles. The first air refueling test was performed in 2019 for FA-18F Super Hornet.
The mission lasted 4.5 hours, with the two aircraft performing numerous dry and wet connects for over 10 minutes, transferring 325 pounds of fuel in total. Further refueling tests were performed with E-2 and F-35C. The Stingray will be the world's first operational, carrier-based unmanned aircraft to enhance capability and versatility for the Carrier Air Wing and Carrier Strike Group. The first order is to be completed by 2024. The Navy plans for all Nimitz and Ford-class carriers to eventually be MQ-25 capable. Another combat-proven autonomous helicopter by Northrop Grumman is the MQ-8B Fire Scout. Originally produced for the United States Army, the MQ-8B has been deployed in Afghanistan since 2011. It has provided real-time airborne surveillance and targeting in support of counter-improvised explosive devices, delivering real-time footage to military forces on the ground. Such unprecedented, persistent situational awareness caused interest with the U.S. Navy, ordering eight Sea Scout derivatives for evaluation. The Fire Scout has been deployed on multiple frigates and is currently assigned to a littoral combat ship. The Navy has integrated a multi-mode maritime radar and tested an onboard weapons capability, the Advanced Precision Kill Weapon System. When it comes to land-based drones, the RQ-4 Global Hawk is a premier provider of persistent ISR for the U.S. Air Force. This remotely piloted aircraft has an integrated sensor suite, able to provide global all-weather data, day or night. The weird-looking whale-shaped fuselage covers a parabolic antenna for a high-bandwidth data link. By being able to connect to communication satellites even when they are just above the horizon, the operators can receive the reconnaissance data in real time. The V-tail shape was specifically chosen to mount the engine above the fuselage to ensure better IR shielding from below. The two tails also shield the exhaust from the side without affecting aerodynamics negatively. Global Hawk is controlled from a cockpit on the ground called Hillary. This workstation is essentially a computer that was designed to be operational 24-7 from potentially any location. The ground station also provides mission coordination and supports requests for additional data products from government customers. The RQ-4 is maintained at Grand Forks Air Force Base, North Dakota, by 319th Reconnaissance Wing. Routine maintenance includes checking the tires for possible leaks, diagnostics as part of pre-flight checks, as well as maintaining the fuel systems. Apart from all the maintenance done in response to malfunctions, 
The maintenance crew are also certified to deal with hydrazine and the emergency start system. Being a one-time chance to restart the engine if something goes wrong during flight. With a wingspan of over 130 feet, the Global Hawk can remain airborne for over 30 hours at an altitude of 60,000 feet. The high wingspan helps in extending the range and especially the flying time. The drone can survey as much as 40,000 square miles of terrain per day an area the size of South Korea or Iceland. Among combat drones, the MQ-9 Reaper is the first hunter-killer UAV designed for long-endurance, high-altitude surveillance. Also known as Predator B, it features an endurance of over 27 hours and is able to operate at an altitude of up to 50,000 feet. The aircraft carries 500% more payload and has nine times the horsepower compared to its previous versions. The MQ-9 is equipped with a fault-tolerant flight control system and triple-redundant avionics, meeting and exceeding, by far, manned aircraft reliability standards. The drone can be dissembled and loaded into a single container for deployment worldwide. The entire system can be transported in the C-130 Hercules or larger aircraft. The assembly process is simple, but requires a few steps. First, the fuselage is taken apart and broken down into parts. The cockpit and landing gear are removed from the fuselage and the fuel tanks are detached. Next, these components are loaded onto trucks or an aircraft and transported to their final destination, a nearby military base, where they will be reassembled into their final form as an MQ-9. Once there, workers will place the components near their respective positions on the aircraft. This process will be repeated until all the components are positioned perfectly and ready to be connected together. The weapon loading process is the last step in preparing the Reaper. The MQ-9 carries a variety of weapons, including the GBU-12 Paveway-2 laser-guided bomb, the AGM-114 Hellfire-2 air-to-ground missiles, the AIM-9 Sidewinder, and the GBU-38 Joint Direct Attack Munition. The latter allows the weapons to drop in adverse weather conditions and pinpoint targets with smart accuracy. When fully loaded with munitions, Reaper has an endurance of 14 hours. Once airborne, it will follow predetermined flight paths within a set radius around its base until it reaches its first mission area. At this point, 
it will begin looking for targets using sensors. Up until 2020, the MQ-9 depended on ground control stations for line-of-sight guidance to take off and land, which limited the places it could operate from. In 2021, the new automatic takeoff and landing capability software was introduced and successfully tested at Creech Air Force Base. The new capability demonstrated how the unmanned system can automatically take off, fly, and land from one airport to another. The modified Reaper became more agile and dynamic, being able to fly without the need for traditional ground logistical support. The drone will also require fewer crew to operate, perform maintenance activities, and refuel. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.